Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering Smartsheet Engage 2019. Brought to you by Smartsheet. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Smartsheet Engage here in Seattle, Washington. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Jeff Frick. We're joined by Mae McCutcheon. She is the program director at Ogilvy. Ogilvy, Hi guys. thank you yeah. so much for coming on. My pleasure. So Ogilvy is a huge name in the advertising industry, but why don't you give our viewers a little bit of background about what you do and, and the company itself. Uh, one of the fun little stories that, that I like to tell is something that our founder said so many years ago. If you, are, uh, if you hire people that are smaller than you, you end up with tiny people in your company, right? You, you want to hire someone bigger than you and you end up a company of giants. And I feel like that really like kind of sums up Ogilvy. It's such a, a big name in the industry. 70 years we've been around. Um, I'm a program director. I work in operations. I also work in resource management. Um, I like to think that I'm a utility player, you know, like wherever, wherever the fire is, <laughs> I'll go and try to help out. Um, Smartsheet's made that a lot easier for me in the last couple of years. Um, my origin story of Smartsheet is I was working with an account and someone had to leave suddenly and they asked me to step in and do some of the account executive duties. I had no idea what, you know, some of those were. I am lifelong operations, I am not lifelong advertising. So, it was like trial by fire, but I had recently been introduced to Smartsheet. So I had this tool and I went to meetings for like two weeks and I gathered every piece of data I could and then after that time like images came out of the mist and suddenly like the world made sense and um, my boss one day was walking by and saw like a pie chart, what's that? And I'm like, oh, I just made this because it's helping me learn about the account, right? And he was like, oh, we're making an appointment with my boss and like on it went from there. So but you said you've been in operations forever, so what brought you to Smartsheet? Clearly you've worked with other tools, you've worked in complicated projects before. What was so different this time? I would say uh, the ease of use and the instant adoptability with, with, with other people and the functionality, being able to attach a file, and this is long before, be before there were dashboards, before any of that stuff, just attaching a file, um, the comments on the line, really ease of use. Ease of use, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> so in your, in your line of work, there are so many different assets that you need to work on, and the way that the, the advertising industry has changed so much, you only have so much time to get the customer's attention. Can you talk a little bit about just those changes, and then how that's changed what you need to do and what your team needs to do on a day-to-day -day basis? We spent a lot of time tracking. We still spend a lot of time tracking. Um, and customers will say, you guys talk to us too much. And then they'll say, we didn't get the right information. So I think um, I'm talking to other people here at the conference and nobody really wants to say, my company's having a difficult time grappling with like this torrent of data that we're all living with. You know, I, I miss things for my kid because I missed the email in my inbox about the school, even though I'm looking for it. So I, I think it's a large problem that a lot of companies are dealing with and uh, nobody really wants to admit, <laughs> admit it. Um, but we're finding that we're changing the way we work and it's making a big difference. Like the tools that we used to use don't apply anymore because they don't make any sense. Like you know if you have like a shared folder on a drive, good luck. You know, with a flashlight and like a, you know, you're never going to find it. <laughs> so um, these kinds of tools, Smartsheet is helping us, is helping us really change the way we work. The other thing too, the complexity of which you guys deliver, um, you made a nice customer video for, for the Smartsheet team and, and really goes through on some campaign for a shoe or something. You know, you kind of got your, your core theme that you develop, but you guys are making so many derivative, plat, uh, derivative assets for so many derivative platforms to be used in such different ways that kind of the variation, I, I assume the version control, the variance based on the geo speed. or whatever, the speed, completely different uh, working situation. Yeah, we're very excited about Slope, the, um, the asset tracking software that, uh, that Smartsheet has purchased and we've, I think we've started a pilot and we're really excited to see how, how that works out because that's something that all of the stuff that we're building in Smartsheet will then be able to talk to this other system. So the tracking system will be able to talk to revenue projections or whatever else you want it to talk to. You know, uh, capacity planning, resource management, and yes, of all, all the versions that we have to deal with, 
there's two pieces of the versioning. One is like, what do we need to deliver to the client today? Do we have the right version? We got to ship this out, it's going to print. You don't want the wrong one going out. But then also, two, three years from now, if somebody comes and says, hey, can you give me the version that shipped? And everyone's like, oh, I don't know which, it's one of these, I don't know which one. Because in our industry, people rotate off accounts. You work on one account for a number of years and then you decide you want some B2B expertise or some consumer products good expertise and the company's very good about enriching people's careers that way, moving them around, but that means they're taking their knowledge with them. So one of my favorite things about Smartsheet is not only does it help us track and there's transparency and automation and all that stuff, but when we finish a project, if we've used it correctly, it's beautifully archived. So not only can you find all of the assets, even the little itty bitty ones, but you can see a, a, a chat trail on which one was used this time and you can, I like also you can right click on a cell and see the cell history, like who made that note, you know, or who put that number in. It's, it's perfect. Right. It's a mini handbook that you can hand yeah. over into, to on-ramp someone onto a new project. Like if you could talk to the person that was there that did it, you know, right. like it, it's, the intuition that's there is great. So what does this do in terms of changing the culture of your organization and the ways in which employees are interacting with each other? I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about the culture piece because uh, I'm going to talk about it internally and then I'll talk about it with clients. Internally, if you're a business leader and you need to get your revenue projections from five markets or regions or whatever you want to call them, you need this, th these numbers. Like every month, give me these numbers. So we go down to them and we say, this is it. I need you to fill out this column and the months. That's it. They can then, with Smartsheet, do whatever, they, whatever else they want with the sheet. They can add columns, like some of them track quarterly and some of them track by the half and some of them weekly. They can do all that. As long as my numbers are in, and I, and I have that in a report, so all of these cultures are slightly different. Ogilvy has a culture, but so do our clients. And when you work with a client closely, you adopt part of that culture. So I don't want to say to anybody in the company, this is how it's going to be and this is how you have to do it. I think that kills morale, I think it kills creativity, I think it kills innovation. So that's one thing that I love about Smartsheet is it helps you preserve culture. It helps even like underscore it. And do you think it's made you as a team also more uh, wanting to lean on each other in different ways and in the sense of wanting to, get, the unlocked creativity piece is what I'm, what I'm trying to get unlocked at here. Unlocked creativity and accountability. Yes, I think it's much easier to define who's responsible for what with that clearer communication. You know, you can get a card view and you'd be like, that's your, literally your lane. That's what it's called, it's called your lane. So I think that helps people, like I know what I'm accountable for and I know what I need to do. And so um, I'm going to be better at it. And I also am not, I'm going to have a better picture of the whole project instead of just what I'm doing. So right. knowing where it's coming from and where it's going to go after and that context makes me better. And are you seeing one of the big themes for all these types of software is that you know, it, it frees up people from doing less mundane, uh, less routine, less rote, kind of your example of rolling up the numbers so that it frees you up to do higher value activities. You know, are you seeing that? How does it manifest itself in your guys' ability to deliver? The automation, uh, let's see, let's see how that, we haven't, I was talking about, the. I said I would get back to the client a minute ago and I didn't. Um, we haven't, I can't think of, and uh, a time when we use, we use automation a lot internally. I'm trying to think about what we do with clients because client facing is obviously a little bit different. Um, but it internally is probably the harder challenge though, right? It's easy to get excited about a new client. It's, I think it's harder to get excited about you know, another day on you know, week three on an <laughs> eight week project that you're, you're just Plug grinding it away. through. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of love them. I don't know why. I love the internal stuff. I think because of the camaraderie and because of the team building. I sent out, I used a form recently to um, ask some people that I've been working with how they feel about this new project. And it was so easy. I mean, it was like I had fun making the form, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm also having fun reading the responses because they're mostly good and some of them are critical, but they, they, it's, it's, it's delivered so well, the comments, like, oh, we needed to hear that. We can actually make this better now. That's great. Seeing the big picture though, I want to I hear as a business leader what that means to you and, and in particular what it was like before when you didn't have full information and you couldn't exactly get the real time status report and understand what needed to be done and what wasn't working so well. We had people working off of different sort of playbooks. 
right? So you have one department and they know what their focus is and they know what they're doing. And another department has a different responsibility. They go to a meeting and they kind of hear different things, right? Because they're thinking about what am I going to be doing with this? And the other one's thinking about how am I going to do it? And, they, and, and so that you, you can really run into problems because then you have people that are on divergent paths. And so now if everyone's working off the same document, you don't have that problem anymore. Does that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit, babe, and, um, and talk about where we are kind of as a society in terms of the attention economy. Right, that's the hardest thing to get these days is people's attention. I think in your little video you guys talked about you know, the number of impressions per day, which of course is infinite, and the, yeah. the time per impression is just basically zero plus a little bit more. Um, and you guys are right at the leading edge of trying to capture that attention, facing that challenges. I wonder if you can just kind of speak generally as to the evolution of that and the way that messaging and images and, and kind of types of engagement have to change when your, your opportunities are very, very short, but they're spread across a lot of different things, and you know, if it's targeted right, you know, the opportunities for a match on a good target, as someone said, if it's, if it's a good match, it's magical. Um, and how you kind of look at the challenge and the opportunity of operating in 2019 where attention is so hard to get. I think to give you a really good answer to that question, I would need someone from the media department, <laughs> someone from strategy, someone from creative, and someone from the CEO's office. Um, but we'll I, be in New York in two weeks, we'll in, get that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's so much that goes into it, and clients are so different. You know, some want this really long, long list of different deliverables that they want and it's on a, on a tight pace, and then some are more interested, like, oh, just like an overall brand, you know, we just want some brand strategy. One thing that we do well, and that, that, it, that is our core, is we make brands matter. That's, that is the Ogilvy ethos right there. So no matter what's going on with the industry as it's changing, and you know, this week it's banners, next week it's social, or whatever, um, we, we're always focused on the brand first, and whatever makes sense on that day, in that era, we will choose the platform and the software and whatever else that helps us best service our clients. But still staying to that core mission around the brand, the brand Brands values, matter. what it represents. That is, that is the number one thing, yeah. yeah. So what's next? I mean, what, when, you, when you're here at the Smartsheet Engage and you're talking and hearing about how other companies use it and how other teams are, are finding new collaborations and what, do, what are you going to come away with? What are you going to bring back to your team in, in New York? I think the most exciting thing for me so far has been, I mean, I love the, the multi-select drop down I, and, and I mean, there's a lot of great things, but when they talked about a little bit of a touch on AI and how the, pr the platform will be watching the way you work, and I, I don't want to use language, people get so creeped out, you know? <laughs> like, well, is it watching it? What are you watching? No, it's just like, you know, following a pattern that it will suggest things. So I think that's going to help search, and then it's going to know, like, well, every other time you ran that report, then you wanted a dashboard, want me to kick it off for you? I am really excited about that, I think, because right now the automation is good and it's getting better, right? You have, like, um, you can set by time, you can set reminders by, by date, and, and lots of great things that you can do with the forms. But I think that AI piece is really what's going to make a change. How would you say that your team feels about that? I mean, you, you hear that people have so much trepidation around AI, and, and the robots are coming. I don't talk to them about it. <laughs> just pretend like We're it's not, not like, there. It's just something you don't have to do. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, do, but do they see it as the, as the potential benefits that could come from it of? Yes, I think a lot of people uh, already, in, in a recent a project, everyone's like, the drudgery is gone. It's just gone. And sometimes I feel like, because one thing I ask them is, do you feel like you're spending more time on this, or do you feel like you're spending less time, and do you feel like you're spending more time, but you're more informed and better to do your job, right? So sometimes it's both. Sometimes some people say, I spend less time now that I'm using Smartsheet. Some people spend more time because they're getting more information that they needed, you know? Right, right. Well, I, love, I love your example how you just need that one self filled in and whatever it takes you, the individual, to get to that number, you don't really care. I don't um, care. The flexibility. And so you can, you can organize your thoughts, your way of working, your way of organizing information, whatever makes sense for you to get to that, that answer. That flexibility is so important and I see it. Every team that I give this, you know, I have the one document I need, six numbers a month, that's all I need, six numbers a month. And every sheet is different. 
And I've told them, I'm like, well, no, you're the admin and you can make all these changes that you want to change. And it's a little bit risky, you know? What if they delete one of my columns? Well, then I'll go and put it back and tell them, don't do that. But, right, right. but, but, but they, everybody does it differently. Somebody took the name column and put it on the end. I mean, whatever floats your boat, you know? Did, did you bring them together at some point to say, here's how you did it, here's how you did it, you know, here's best practices, maybe you guys, you know, Susie over here did it this way, seems to work really well, and Bob's I do one over on here one is kind of funky. I, I do one-on-one -on -one whenever I can. Okay. I really like it. That's how I, I, I like the engagement, you get to know someone. Um, I also say, my SIG file has my cell phone, you can Slack me, you can call me, you can text me, middle of the night, doesn't matter, we're here. Like, I have two clients, you know, I, there's, there's the, the clients that we service in the world, the other companies, but then for me, my clients are the employees. Yeah. And you know, the employees that are, that are servicing those clients. That's great. Great. And as you said, when the drudgery is gone, that makes for people who want to come to work and who are more satisfied, so then they give more of themselves and during the work day, and it, it, is, it does become a they're virtuous also, circle. They're also more relaxed. You know, yeah. because I think we were alluding to this earlier. It's like b before we were using Smartsheet, you weren't always sure. Like you, some like project was going to jump out from behind a lamppost on your way home at night <laughs> and like ruin your life right, for a right. day. You know. Right, right. So now, like we can see that guy from far off. We're like, ah, I got my eye on you. Yeah. You're not going to get me. Yeah. And it gives us what I call the Smartsheet calm. You know, like we know, like everybody knows what the schedule is from here to the end of the year. Maybe even for into 2020 and 2021. So we're starting to scope for the next year and we're setting the smart sheets up for and people are like, oh my God, there's the, there's the view, it's beautiful. Yeah, right, right, I think we need to create a new smart sheet yoga pose. Before, you <laughs> yes. know? I mean, let, let's do it, let's do it. Do you know what I'm always on the hunt for? <laughs> the weirdest use of smart sheet. <laughs> okay. What's the weirdest you found so, so far? Um, the weirdest, somebody mentioned something about a writer who uses Smartsheet to track all the ways they procrastinate from writing. Like, oh, whoa. That's pretty good. That pretty is. Good. Another woman used it for her Thanksgiving shopping. I'm like, okay, that's like next level cooking yeah, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And then also, um, on the way home from the grocery shopping for Thanksgiving, the wines she was going to buy. <laughs> so she's tracking her wines and her food. That's good though for the pairings and which, which I, I like that. I'm yeah, gonna, you could do like a little, um, imagine that with your card view, like oh the Merlot, like we put it over with right. the turkey or whatever. Yeah. News you can use. Nice. May McCutcheon, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. My the pleasure, Cube. thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Jeff Frick, stay tuned, you are watching theCUBE.